Hello and welcome to Focus on Fantasy Romance, the show where we talk about books, genre, industry, and our geeky lives. I am the host, Elizabeth Schomp. I keep losing my windows, if you're with me here. Uh, with me, I have A.R. DeClerc. Hi, everyone. And Paulina Woods. Hello. And today we are doing another author mixer, and we are sharing our top five favorite books of all time. Not not just fantasy romance, but top five uh, books of all time. But we are going to start with uh, news, because this is a uh, mixer. And I'll go first. I don't really have much. Um, I'm using a service called Press Books to try to do my paperback for... Uh, my besotted steampunk romance, and it works great when I do the images right, so I have to go back in and redo all my images because I save them at the wrong uh, DPI or dots per inch. Um, uh, Amy, Paulia, and another author, Jenna Baxter, are doing, we're all doing an anthology, and I think we're making progress on that. To answer your question, Amy, um, I haven't gotten back to Kate about the uh, cover, but the anthology is called... Um, it's going to be pretty. It is going to be pretty. Reflections of Love. And we all contributed a short story to that. So hopefully that will be out sometime in October. And that's a freebie. Um, and I actually managed to get some editing done on my Wireless Book 2. Uh, I have no editing just because of errands and people getting sick. So I made some progress on deceiving the bandit lord. So I'm pretty excited to be back at that project. So, A.R. DeClerc, do you have any news? Who's beeping? I, uh, that's my phone, sorry, I just shut it down. Um, my husband was texting me. Um, don't really have a whole lot of news to share. Um, I was busy with some editing for uh, my Takamo project short story. Um, I did get some positive feedback from the editor. She, I was super happy because writing short is not my forte. It's very, very difficult for me. And I actually, she told me that my world building was so tight and dense that she thought she was reading a novella as opposed to a short story. So I was pretty proud of that. Um, doesn't happen often when I write short because it's a struggle. Um, Let's see what else. I'm currently editing in the final editing process for Judge and Jury, which will be in the Fall Into Magic uh, Paranormal Romance Collection coming out. Uh, Pre-orders are 99 cents, so grab that while you can, all platforms. And, oh, another thing. Our Writer Punk Press anthology, um, nearly this and nothing more, Edgar Allan Poe gets punked, um, or goes punk, I should say, won uh, first place in the... Uh, Summer Indie Book Awards. So, uh, yay for Poe Punk. Uh, my story, Merely This and, uh, not Merely This, Things of the Future, um, which is based off Poe's Melanta Tauta, which is very um, obscure work that he did and actually fairly boring. But, um, yeah, so that's a charity anthology. If you guys grab a copy of that, all proceeds go to Animal uh, Welfare Association. Um, so, that's about all the news I have for uh, this time. What about you, Paulina? I've been slacking for like two weeks. <laughs> Haven't really written anything, but I did finally get um, my story off to editor for um, our collaboration that we're doing. Then um, that's going to be like a week or two, she said, to get back to me. I started writing again on Dual Guardian, editing going to see if I can get that back to the editor next week so I can at least get the third book out. Um, I started for a competition. It's supposed to be the 24, um, 24 hours after the, you know, the end of the world. Um, I'm going to try to join that competition just because I have a story that's kind of, you know, end of the world. So I'm writing the fall is what it's called. Um, it's kind of funny. I just left my characters after the um after what is it called the um, nuclear plant just blew up so i have to do some research because i was like oh it just blew up yay oh wait can they survive did they survive that are they far enough away um so that's going to be really cool um 
the best part is, I'm sharing this with everyone because I love it. Um, I came up with the best first line ever. It's basically everyone was prepared for the end of the world. And because we're all prepared for it, but if it really happens, you really think it's going to be zombies, you know? So, like, it goes, um, everyone was prepared for the end of the world. Zombies bring them on. Epic flu, why not? But, you know, no one was prepared for what really happened. Um, so that's what I'm working on now. Plus, I think today I'm going to actually clean my room. I know that's not book related, but to me that's a huge deal because <laughs> I'm starting to step on clothes. So, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, my husband shared this with me. Do you ever play the game Fallout? Paulina? I have played it before, but that's a game I like playing with someone, so I don't have anybody to play with it anymore. Okay, so you know the uh, um, he has the stance where he's holding up his thumb? Apparently they used to teach people that if you, if you see a nuclear explosion and you hold up your thumb and your thumb is smaller than the nuclear explosion, you're standing too close, like you would be within the blast radius <laughs> so, or the radiation. So, yeah, so I thought it was really interesting. So if your thumb is bigger than the, the blast, you can get to shelter before it, it overtakes you. But if, if it's smaller, if your thumb is smaller, then you're in trouble. And I'm like, I didn't know that. No wonder he's constantly standing up all the time, giving a big thumbs up. I thought he was just really happy. Oh, no. But they can't, do, they're, in a, they're in like a huge like drainage pipe. So they can't actually get out and put their hand, thumb up. Yeah, if you're in a drainage pipe, I don't recommend going outside to test that. <laughs> so stay where you are. <laughs> okay, so the topic of this uh, podcast... Oh, I'm sorry. I have one more piece of news. If you actually listen to podcasts through iTunes, we are now on iTunes. That was a huge pain in the butt, but we're there. So you can subscribe, and as soon as I get the episode up, which tends to be Saturday morning, uh, you can listen to our weirdness as soon as it's available. So, the purpose of this mixer is our top five favorite books, uh, regardless of genre. Uh, so, I will start. These are in no particular order. This is just, I grabbed them off my shelf, and this is the order. So, the first one I have is Cressley Cole's A Hunger Like No Other. This is a paranormal romance, high heat. Um, and this is the first romance novel that I ever actually read and I got into it because of the cover so I picked it up because the cover was pretty <laughs> which apparently is a trend um, and it's got it's got the faded mate trope so you do have to suspend a little bit of disbelief as far as why she would fall in love with someone who is kind of handsy um, loved it it was one of those I couldn't put it down and thank God this is a series the immortal after dark series because I yeah there's just I love this book. I love the characters. I love the idea that someone could be fated. Because honestly, that was my first approach to um, uh, the fated mate trope. I never actually encountered that before. So I was like, this is awesome. Also, this helped me tackle how I was going to handle characterization in my own work. So I wasn't sure how to do a series that didn't have the same couple over and over again. Because honestly, you fall, you fall in love once, generally, with the same person. So I was like, well, I can't keep having them falling in and out of love throughout a series because people are going to just think that I'm crazy or they have selective memories. So this really helped me um, figure out how to handle that uh, type of characterization. And I honestly, I think Lachlan was my first official book boyfriend. It's Lachlan, right? <laughs> But yeah, I think this is my first official boyfriend. And you guys all nodded when I held this up. So what do you guys think? Go, Amy. That is uh, my top five favorite series ever. Absolutely adore everything Cressley Cole writes in that series. She has a contemporary romance series that I don't like um, because it's not at all the same tone. Um, but Immortals After Dark... Uh, yeah, definitely one of my favorites. Um, shocking is sometimes because she was one of the first times, <clears throat> and I'll get into this later when I get back to my choices, but 
She was one of the first authors I ever read that turned a villain into a hero. And she did it flawlessly. And I'm like, oh, that was so sneaky, but so good. Um, so, yeah, uh, I love the fact that she takes the side characters from the previous novels and gives them their own story so that everybody gets a chance to um, read about their favorite, whoever their favorite might be. Um, and there's plenty more to come in that series because she just keeps introducing new characters as time goes. And I'm completely caught up to the new newest book. but. Yeah, um, probably one of my, yeah, it's definitely my top five. And A Hunger Like No Other, I liked. But Demon from the Dark, um, I think, was my favorite, which was uh, Malcolm and Caro, their story. Um, and Lothair, of course, um, when you talk about Immortals After Dark, you have to talk about Lothair. He was the villain to hero story. Um, but, and then there's a spinoff of that series immortals after dark um that she did that i really liked and i think the title is something shadows um but i also really really loved might be shadows of sin i can't remember for sure but i really really loved that book as well because it was kind of spin off from from immortals after dark so yeah you definitely picked a good one that's definitely one of my favorites paulina have you ever read any of cressley cole that's what I was just looking at on my bookshelf. I know I read one of hers or two of hers, but I haven't read it in like three or years or something like that. I can't really remember. But like, that's why when I seen it, I was like, oh my God, I have that book on my shelf. And now I'm like, damn it. Now I got to go back and read it again. Like, I know I, as you can tell, I have way too many books. Um, and just today I read two. So yeah. I would have to go back and look at it to see exactly. But I remember I remember the book, and I'm like, yeah, that's a good book. And I'm just like, yeah, it's coming back to me. But I think I need to go back and refresh my memory. So looks like I'll be doing that this weekend. Oh, Amy, what was your first uh, top five? Unmute yourself, Amy. Here I did. Go. Okay. I had to figure out where the button went. Um, so I, this is a particular order, um, just for this book, because this is my absolute favorite book ever in the history of books. Um, so I'm going to hold it up. This is my ratted, uh, really ratty copy, um, that I've had forever. It's called Swiftly Tilting Planet by my absolute favorite author in the entire world, who is Madeline Lingle. Um, it is part of a series, um, called The Wrinkle in Time Saga. And it is a young adult science fiction slash fantasy slash romance slash super awesome um, novel. So I'll tell you a little bit about why I loved it. Um, this is the first book that I ever fell in love with. Um, the first book that ever made me cry. And the first book that ever made me think beyond the words on the page. So um, when you open this book, like... And, and Madeline Lingle, if you've never read anything she's written, she is fantastic, but she can, she really writes coming of age stories for young adult, um, always mixed with fantasy. Um, and so in this novel, you have the brother of the girl who is the main character in the first novel, which is A Wrinkle in Time. And I loved Wrinkle in Time. That's why I picked up this book. But this book really touched me probably more than Wrinkle in Time. But it starts out with Charles Wallace. And he's um, special in a lot of ways. Um, and he has a very special family. Um, they're a very close-knit family. But Charles Wallace gets a strange feeling. Um, so his father works for the government and gets a phone call that um, someone, at the dictator in South America is threatening nuclear war. So Charles Wallace gets this feeling in his head that he needs to go out to the star watching rock and, and think about some things. So he goes out and he lies down on the rock and a unicorn comes down on a beam of moonlight and takes Charles Wallace on a journey through time and within uh, people in time so that he gets to experience the past. And so Charles Wallace changes the past um, in order to affect the future. So um, and it's not a spoiler because it says it right on the back cover that that's what happens. But um, so I would suggest that uh, anybody who ever wants to read like the best fantasy novel ever picks this up because um, it's not 900 pages like an Anne McCaffrey. Um, 
it's not super complicated in any means. Um, but I just can't gush enough about it. I always read it when I need inspiration or when I feel blue or, um, when I feel like I need, you know, a pick me up. So yeah, this is my first number one top book ever. Um, the rest of the books that we talk about later are in no particular order, but this one is always on the top of any list. So, um, have you guys ever read this before? Sorry, my dog has a huge voice. I've read A Wrinkle in Time before. Wrinkle in Time? Yes. That's the title of it, right, Amy? Nod. Okay. <laughs> I was like, when I was little, I used to go to get dropped off at the library, and I just read through a whole section. I remember that series and so many series. So I'm thinking back to my, you know, what was that? I don't know, my sixth, seventh grade year. Yeah, I read it. I liked it. I continued reading through everything, but now I need to go back and think about it. Maybe we should do a list of things we read when we were kids. So, yeah, I read it. I have, um, I went online to Amazon and I bought all of my favorite books that I read as a kid, except one that I couldn't find called Half Magic. Um, which was in my library and I read it like a billion times. Um, and I always checked it out every week, but I can't find it online. Um, it's no longer in print. Um, but yeah, I just went and I bought them because I want them on my shelf and I want to go back and read them. And there was another one called the Egypt game, which was the first book I ever read about murder. <laughs> um, but I couldn't find that one either. But, um, but yeah, it's so fun to go back and think about all the stuff that you read when you were a kid. I'm going to have to do that. Maybe we'll see money. <laughs> I think I'd go broke if I went back and bought all the books that I liked and that I read as a child because I pretty much went to the library on the weekend uh, and maxed out the number of books I could read or could borrow <clears throat> and then I'd have them return before the the, the, the return date. So I, I would go broke. I, would, I don't have enough money for all that. Um, but I read, I read A Wrinkle in Time and The Swifting Tilting planet and I've read all the way I've read through the series through many waters I'm not sure if that's the last book but that's as far as I got um, and I really liked the series I liked the fact that the family was intellectual like they would actually sit down and talk about science and related topics and um, my family would do that but none of like I would visit friends and family and their families didn't talk like that it was all current events or stuff like that. And I'm like, it's nice to see a family that actually talks about science and mathematics and they value intellectualism over being good at sports or, um, you know, my family is very not sports related. Like we have a lot of musicians and we have computer scientists. Um, but we're not, I don't know, we just never fit in. So like, that's what I really liked about the series. And although my favorite in the series was Many Waters, I did read the whole thing. Um, I will tell you that if you read between the lines of pretty much everything Madeline Lingle ever writes, there is a religious um, message to be had, Many Waters um, especially. Um, but, but the whole family, the, the wall, um, uh, the Murray family, that's what I'm trying to think of their name, the Murray family, they had intellectuals, they had the daughter who was a complete, you know, outcast, basically, and she was awkward, and they had Charles Wallace, who was special, um, and then they had Sandy and Denny's, the twins, who did sports and were well-liked, and, but everyone was very smart, both parents were scientists, and so, yeah, I agree, in my family growing up, we had, it was absolutely no big thing to have a debate, you know, where we would talk about a religion or we would, um, you know, break down whatever scientific article we read this week or, you know, because, or my mom would talk about World War II or the Civil War because she's huge into studying those things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, and my mom read tons of true crime. So, you know, it was nothing for us to talk about Helter Skelter or, you know, um, Richard Ramirez or, you know, anything like that. So I think it is important when you see yourself in the characters in the book or you, you like the fact that they're like your family. 
yeah, um, definitely fun. So if you have kids, this is one to pick up. Okay, so oh. my turn. Yep. So, okay, I'll go fast. My favorite, uh, growing up, my mom used to take us to a used bookstore. Old, oh my God, the guy died a long time ago. I don't know who runs it now. But we used to be able to buy five books for 99 cents each. My books, I always ran to them. They were on the top shelf at the climb of stairs to get to them. But they were Executioner, which is this one. This is an Executioner. This is an original brand. But what I started reading first was Phoenix Force, which is like a group of five men who fought everywhere in the world for the good of mankind. It was um, an Israeli and Japanese, white guy, German. I mean, they had them all. This book right here, which is my absolute favorite, was published in 1984. I was born in 1983. So you can see, like, and it was, like, during the, this is during, like, um, I don't know, NATO is fighting against Germany. And I love these books so much, I devoured them. And I literally have, I don't know, I'm going to say, like, 500 of them that I collect and love them so much. So, yeah. These are my all-time favorite. I still I don't collect them anymore, but I will never get rid of them ever, ever, ever. Okay, that's my first one. You have room for five hundred books in your home. I live by myself, and I have two and a half shelves that are stacked like this, front and back. So they're stacked like this, and on the bottom, then in the fronts. Wow. Yeah, I have way too many books. Shh. No. <laughs> there's not there's no such thing as way too many books which is where did you fit them all but that, I guess that makes sense um, my, more. Next, my next book is by Tanith Lee it's called the silver metal lover this is a sci-fi with romantic elements uh, this is not a romance um, but again, I picked it up because of the cover, <laughs> and I really like the blurb. It's a story about a young woman who is unsure of herself, and she sees um, a, a robot that's designed for pleasure, and she gets up the balls to buy him, and uh, through the whole experience, she learns to basically be herself. He really brings her out of, her, out of her own little shell. Um, and he was he was kind and attentive, and I just really really loved the book. Then um, there is a sequel to this. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it came out years and years afterward, and that is good. But oh, I love this one. Has anyone else read it? I haven't read it, but it looks good, and I'm like sitting here going, "Hmm, I hate you." <laughs> I have not read it either, but um, it sounds extremely interesting. Well, now you have something to go buy. Thank What's your you. next book? I, I didn't need another book. We oh. always need more books. That's true. Okay, Amy. Um, okay, so up to number two, and um, surprise, surprise, woo another kid's book. Um, hilarious and um, super cool, and this is The Phantom Tollbooth. So um, basically in the Phantom Toll Booth, a boy named Milo is very, very bored and a mysterious package shows up at his house and inside is a car and a toll booth. So he gets in and he drives past the toll and he ends up in an extremely interesting world where um, everything is based on rules of language and misunderstanding words and... Um, Everything is pretty hilarious, and one of my favorite parts, and I'll hold this up so you guys can see, are the illustrations. So, um, yeah, it's very um, tongue-in-cheek, and um, it's all about wordplay, and um, there is a war going on between numbers and words. Um, so, yeah, if you ever get a chance and you want to just read something that's funny and lighthearted, I totally suggest it by Norman Jester. I'm sorry, Norton Jester. I always call him, want to call him Norman, but his name is Norton. Um, they just, it is in a movie. If you ever saw it? They usually show it in like sixth grade um, because it's all about English um, and language. So yeah, if you ever get a chance, really fun. 
Okay, my turn. <laughs> okay, so my second book is a book I got when I first started blogging. This author contacted me, and she was like, oh, you know, and I, seriously, best book ever. It's called Wishing, I always say Wishing On, but it says Wishing For a Highlander. It's time travel, and basically she's pregnant. She gets transported back into time, and she meets this guy who's called Big Darcy. And basically, and like you, you find out he's very, he's a very shy guy. He's very large, you know. He's very red, <laughs> but um, he he stays by himself, and he's very unsure of himself. So it's not like a in your face. He's very shy. He's very like I said, unsure of himself. Whatever I said it again, but um, she basically learns. She falls in love with him, but he's like, well, you can't love me the way I am. Nobody does, and just watch them fall in love and there's magic in it and there's all kinds of really cool stuff and there's this little black box that kind of like at the end of the book it connects to the next book and then that black box connects to the third book so I'm just like oh my god I love it so um also on the very back it says when I finished this book I had a book hangover that lasted a day and then I had to read it again blah 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 that's my quote so that's also why I like it no I'm just kidding I like it because it's an amazing amazing book and her name is um, Jessie Cage. If you ever read any of her Highlander books, they're amazing. So that's my second one. I like Highlanders. There's nothing wrong with Highlanders. Okay, I haven't so, read that, but I want to. Yeah. Well, you can't go wrong with the Highlander. Seriously. <laughs> and time travel. Time travel is always fun. And, yeah, and the guy is not in your face alpha. I'm the man. So it's always good. Oh, all the better. So I think I mentioned this last time. This is Alana, The First Adventure by Tamara Pierce. This is a young adult uh, fantasy novel. It's one of four. It's the first of four. And this is the one where the main character switches places with her brother so that she can go become and learn uh, to be a knight. And he can go to the finishing school that also doubles as a like sorcery school. There isn't, it's not a romance per se, but there is a, a romance arc over the four books, but it's more about her uh, learning learning to be a knight, learning to live amongst uh, the other students who are learning to be knights, and the fact that she does have latent uh, magical ability. So uh, I thought this was awesome as a teenager because she's, she's a tough as nails character, and she's got a physical disadvantage because she's trying to spar or best other men or teenagers so she uses her brain and I thought that was amazing and spectacular and this is I actually saw this cover on Amazon this is a re-release of the, the original and I'm like well I like those covers better than the ones I currently have so I went and bought the set again because I preferred these covers to the ones I had so I, I donated my <laughs> My original set, and I bought these because I'm like, these covers are better. <laughs> Please tell me I'm not the only one that does that. No, because what if the original ones would be worth money one day? No, these were these were not. These were loved. And I, I bought them used, so. Okay. Amy, what's your next book? Uh, so my next book is by a favorite author. I'm, uh, you can't see it. <laughs> Can you see it? Um, it is yeah. Lord of the Abyss by Nalini Singh. It's part of the Royal House of Shadows um, series. And the Royal House of Shadows is a series written by several different authors all occurring in the same world. And Lord of the Abyss is her story. Um, it is the world is um, the children of Elden. Um, their kingdom was destroyed and they were split up. And then each author wrote a story about one of the siblings and her story is about Micah, the youngest sibling. And he was, um, cast from Elden into the abyss and he became the keeper of the abyss. So he is basically the guardian, um, of the gates to hell. And he makes sure that all the bad things stay on one side and can't cross over into, you know, the, the realms to bother the people, but he's also been cursed and he turns into a beast um, on certain nights of the year or whatever. So I loved this story because it's not your typical beautiful heroine, extremely handsome hero, fall in love, 
get it on the end. It's not like that at all. The heroine is very, very unattractive. Um, and I'm not saying that because she says she is the way they describe her. She's extremely unattractive. She's gone through hell. She was raised by the bad guy. Um, she's come to try to convince Micah to come home to save his kingdom. And she basically is not at all interested in seducing him, um, or anything like that. But because she is kind and because she is, generous and because she is different than any person she's not afraid of him so he actually has a fascination with her despite the fact that she's extremely unattractive physically um and he's perfection personified as a hero so he is attracted to her even though she's unattractive um and i just absolutely love the way the romance progressed throughout the story and it's very exciting and a lot of things happen um and the ending is really, really good. And it's probably one of the best books that she's ever written, in my opinion. So if you haven't read it, you definitely should get it because she's a master at her craft. And if you want to read a romance that will melt you, and I'm not talking about just the sex or anything like that, but she's just really, really good at writing those, rope, you know, undertones and nuances of, you know, relationships. So yeah, Nalini Singh, Lord of the Abyss. Paulina? Okay, my next one is by Myra Banks, and it's called Never Seduce a Scot. Yes, okay, there's a storyline going here, okay? <laughs> hey, this one, again, I liked it. The girl isn't, um, she's, she's deaf, she can't hear, but everybody thinks she's mute. She's, she's not, but um, it, it's a gripping story of two um, clans that are forced to marry because the king's tired of them fighting all the time over something that happened with their great grandfathers or something. So he's making them marry, but just watching these two fall in love is beyond amazing. Um, I actually have this in paperback and I have it on my Kindle because it's that good. Like I will literally sit there and flip to like a certain passage and just read it because it is, it's intense. It makes you, it makes you fall in love with her. And then later on, it make, I mean, you fall in love with all the characters. They're all starting to get their stories. And just hearing how these two clans are healing after four generations of hating each other is just downright amazing. Also, she's deaf. It's a, it, that's the, that's, I think that's the best part. It's like, she's not perfect. Yes. And she still finds the love of her life. So, yes, that's my third book. Uh, it's funny that you said that you have that book in paperback and in ebook because I have this in paperback and ebook. And this is a new edition for me. I saw it on Amazon. I like the cover because it is original art, it's not uh, manipulated photos. And then I read the uh, description and I was like, oh, damn it, I have to buy it. So I bought it in ebook and then I loved it and I'm like, I've got to buy it in paperback. So now I've got it in paperback. This is Radiance by Grace Draven. It looks like she does a lot of uh, fantasy romance specifically. And yes, that's my husband behind me giving me a thumbs up. Thank you, sweetie. Uh, uh, this is a story about uh, I guess, a marriage treaty between two human a human race and a, a race she calls the Kai, which are kind of like nocturnal, dark-skinned people that have uh, they have claws and fangs. And the, the treaty has been upheld for, I think, generations. And so the main character, both the main characters aren't really thrilled with it, but they're disposable in the line of succession because, like, uh, it's a second, second son or a third princess or something like that. And I really like this because of the way she did her world building. Um, like she pointed out that... The, the Kai don't have the whites of their eyes like we do. So uh, she described the, the male main character's alarm when he could see the whites of her, her eyes and how, like, through the whole book, she, he calls her his holy wife or something like that. And it's, it becomes a term of endearment by the end of the book, and it was so sweet. And the fact that even though they're getting married, he respected her, and she said that, you know, why don't we wait to consummate the marriage um, until we know each other better? And he was like, yes, I agree. 
and uh, I know a lot of fantasy based stories or uh, historical based stories where the guy's like whatever you're my wife went out you know so I really appreciated that in this setting and I really liked the way that she emphasized the difference between the two and how they fell in love over the course of the story Amy? Okay, so um, Paulina is going to get a kick out of this one. Um, we both love this author. I'm going to hold it up if you can see. That is Born of Silence by Sherilyn Kenyon. Um, yes, yes. I have to, yes. Um, so I'll tell you why I love this book. Um, I love all the books in this series. It's called The League. It is her science fiction romance series that she does. Um, She's pretty famous for her paranormal romance and not a lot of her fans um, are like, oh, she does SFR, but this series is phenomenal and the characters are all wonderful. But this book in particular um, has my absolute favorite hero. Um, well, I, actually, I can't say that. I must lie. He's my second favorite hero now. Someone kicked him out of his spot. But anyway, my second favorite hero, um, his name is Darling Cruel and she did this story fantastically because Darling was a character in many of the other books in the series and he was very young and he was younger than everyone else and a lot of readers were expecting and waiting for his romance but you knew it had to be just spectacular. Um, it had to really knock it out of the park and she actually started the book when they were already in love but she did not know who he was. She knew he was a member of the Centella which is the pirate type organization that goes around, um, you know, thwarting the league um, of assassins, but she did not know that he was actually Darling Cruel and that he was an heir to a throne. And as far as all of the people in his kingdom knew, he was gay. And um, no one knew that he was having a, this affair with her. Um, so I... Um, just wanted to let everybody know if you ever I, made me cry, I bawled for him. He goes through a whole lot of hell. I cried for this man and um, he really let me down for a while, but she brought him back at the end. So if you want to cry, if you want to have ugly cry and be just really upset for a long time, this is the right book, but it warm, it'll warm you at the end. <laughs> okay. I can honestly say that yes, I love, oh my God, I love her league books. I read them over and 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 over again. So totally understand. And I met her three times now. Yay! <laughs> so it's even better. Hold on. Where is it? We got these last time I met her. So um, they're original Archen comic books that only were given away at the Comic-Con. By the way, Amy, if you want one, I have an extra... Plus an extra shirt. Just letting you know. Okay, so 20 bucks. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we I didn't um I didn't was it called coordinate, but this is my third. Okay. It's called Night Play by Sharon Kenyon. Um, in case you can't see it, look, it's it's so worn, it's not funny. The reason I love this book beyond a shadow of a doubt is because she wrote about somebody who's a size 18. She wasn't skinny. And when they did the love scene, she actually talked of like, she didn't say, you know, her roles jiggled and stuff. Cause that'd just be weird. But like, I guess the first time and she tried to cover up her stomach and, you know, and the stretch marks and just, you know, the boobs that aren't perky. And so it was really cool to see her fall in love with her, Oh my God, he was so vain is amazingly hot. So I, even when I seen her, I told her, I was like, thank you so much for writing this book for me. Please write another because this, this book is what I, I want to write as is I want to write a book where the, the lady, she's not, you know, she's not perfect. She's not a perfect size. I don't want her to be like a size, you know, 49 either, but I want her to be like our size. I want I want to be like, oh, I can relate to that. Well, technically I can relate to that. That's not the point. <laughs> um, so yes, this is a good book to read. I think it's like, I don't know, the, the fifth book in the series, but it doesn't really matter. Read it, then go backwards if you have to. 
So yeah, that's my third. I picked up that I picked up the sequel to that book or the following book um, in the grocery store just as a lark. First Sherilyn Kenyon book I ever read was Fang and Amy. And then when I got to Bride and Vane, um, I was already in love with the series, but that book is so good. That book is so good. Dance with the Devil is my favorite because I'm I'm just a sucker for the, you know, the misunderstood dude. But that's yeah, all the characters story, are right? so good. No, that's Eric. Okay. See, the, I like Valor's story. Okay, we can get on a whole topic of this. Never mind. Uh, we could totally talk about this series forever. Let's go back to L. L. what's your next books? So my last book, and please pardon my child, is uh, The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. Uh, this is um, one that I actually found because I watched the movie first, and I was like, well, hey, it's a book. I'm going to go read the book, and the book is very good. Um, they, they're both very good, but this is uh, one of my favorites, and I come, I actually have this and the, <laughs> I have the uh, graphic novel version. Um, one of them is signed. It must be the other one. Um, but this is a story about a unicorn that realizes that she is the last of her kind, and she tries to hunt down uh, the. She, hang on a second, please. Um, tries to find the rest of her kind, and she she meets a a really awkward wizard, and um. goes up Hang on a second, guys. Can someone talk for a minute? I read the last unicorn. Well, she's gone. <laughs> Let's talk about Sharon Kenyon books. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I do love Valerius' story. I love Valerius and Tabitha. It's hilarious. I always liked um, Sunshine and Talon as well. Yes, but I think I think the reason I like Valors is because of Talon. He's an ass, and I understand. Like, I understand like everything that went on in the you know, but like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give the guy a break. Like, when you actually yeah. realize what he went through, I'm like, fuck. I hate you, Tally. Yep. But you're so cool. Well, and don't get, don't get me started on Asheron, because that book I literally couldn't read for, like, a month. I, I, I promised myself I would never read it again. I would never read it again. I told my husband, no, Stick. I'm Have done. I'm never Sticks? doing it again. Have you read Sticks? Nope. Read I was no, too no, afraid no, 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 no. it would affect me the same way. No, no, you have to read Sticks only because you will understand the rest of the series. But telling you this now, have a cute, like, three things of tissues. Be ready to scream, yell, punch, cuss her out, throw the book a few times. I will never read it again, ever, 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 but it's a good book. So, okay, Ely, back to you. You're back. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. My child is, is now back in bed or somewhere close. Uh, so yeah, the, the Last Unicorn, there is a romantic element kind of towards the end, but it does not have a romantic happy ending. But I love this book. It's like a, it's like a new fairy tale. Um, if you follow me at all online, you know that I like unicorns, so love unicorns so <laughs> i really recommend this book it's um i think it's age appropriate for just about everybody i think there may be some light cussing but if you really want a good fantasy novel about unicorns i highly recommend this one i was waiting for your unicorn book to come out by the way just i was waiting i'm like where is that i'll write one eventually when when the story idea when I've got the right story idea. That's like one of your favorite books. I was waiting for a unicorn book. But your favorite book, Unicorns. And Biceps. <laughs> I'm sure that'll happen later. All right. What's your next one, Amy? Okay, last book. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you the I'm gonna show you the cover. Can you see it? Okay. So it's called Heart of Obsidian. It's by Nalini Singh. Um if you've ever dreamed of a romance where um, you were completely cherished and adored by this person who would do anything for you, um, I think you will find some satisfaction in this book. You know how I feel about the villain. Y'all know how much I love the villain redeemed and the bad bad boy with a heart of gold and all those tropes are my favorites. Um, this is the best villain into a good guy book you will ever read in your whole life. Um, he's still not a good guy. He is gray. 
and he makes it very clear that he will never be good. Um, he's done too many terrible things in his life. And I mean, they're terrible and he's, he does not afraid to say it. He's extremely powerful, does anything and everything that he wants. You realize when you get to this book that the entire reason that he's been doing all of these horrible things all of this time is because he's been looking for her. So she kidnapped. She has been, um, experimented on. She has been tortured tortured and he has been looking for her and when you it flashes back to their backstory and why she is so important to him and I'm literally getting goosebumps right now because it is so um emotionally charged um when you see how their lives interacted and how one person's kindness can change another person um it's like she planted a seed inside him and he could have been a horrible monster, but because he met her, he kept that one little spark of goodness inside him. And he searched for her and searched for her and searched for her all this time and did all these terrible things. No one ever knew that was his reasoning. And then he finally finds her at the beginning of this book. So that's all I can say about it because I can't, I can't tell you anymore because then you'll die and then I'll have to talk about it for like six hours. But read the book. You don't have to read any of the other side changeling novels. It doesn't matter. This is the best book as far as romance goes that I have ever read because it has everything that I want in it. It has a bad guy. It has, you know, the love story. It has everything. Okay. I'll shut up now because I can't talk about it anymore. Okay. So, um, I'm ashamed to hold this book up, but I'm going to, um, my sister's rabbit decided that it tasted good and I can't bring myself to get rid of it. Okay. So no laughing. It's basically rabbit chewed, but <laughs> I can literally tell you word for word from beginning to end how it, I mean, that's how much I've read it. It's called the perfect wife by Lindsay Sands. And it's about a girl who Again, she's, you know, a larger size, but in this one, she had cousins who were just cruel. Um, because of the fact that she was larger, they always teased her about what she ate. They always told her, you know, you're a cow. No one's ever going to love you. No one's going to ever want you. So then she has an arranged marriage. And even at her wedding, they were just rallying on her. And so like her groom to be is, you know, he, he has to break down those barriers and also go through like someone's trying to stop their marriage and a lot of things are happening, but she writes some really funny books. Um, I actually start laughing halfway through. It's, it's comedy romance, I guess you can say, but a little bit of suspense in there too. Um, I will be continuously reading this until it falls apart and then I'll go buy another one. And then after I have to buy another one, that one will probably fall apart too. She's a good author. I would recommend her to anyone who likes contemporary light. You know, let's kind of have a little fun in my reading. I don't read all fantasy or paranormal, but you have to really catch my attention if they're not. So, yeah, that's my last book, and I'll probably read that again tonight. And that's it. Okay. Well, I apparently need to read some Sherilyn Kenyon because I have not read any. Or you guys can have your own show just gushing about Cheryl and Kenyon, and I'll just, I don't know, sit along for the ride. So <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up, though, because Paulina keeps telling me through the chat that she needs to go. So if you liked the episode today, uh, like, share, and comment. You can subscribe through um, Apple iTunes, like I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast. We have a website, focus on fantasyromance.wordpress.com. And you can stop there, subscribe, like I said, leave a comment. We like comments. So if no one's got anything else, I will wish you all a good night. Bye. Good night, everybody. Peace.